Hey, hello again. Well, I'm here at Rooster Rock State Park on the Columbia River. It's in the beautiful Oregon, Washington, Columbia River Gorge on the Oregon side of the river. I've been exploring a little bit. I was exploring around Multnomah Falls last night and driving around the area. There's just endless paintings to be done in this area. Beautiful time of year, early summer. It's been kind of a dry spring here in Oregon and California especially. They're all in pretty severe drought. It's been pretty wet up near Tacoma where I live. I'm down here because I delivered a large painting for a show to a gallery in Portland, the Elizabeth Jones Art Center. They're doing a show in Lincoln City out on the Oregon coast. It benefits ocean charities. A certain percentage of each sale goes to the charity of the artist choice. So I'm really happy to be participating in that. We've, we've got to protect our oceans. That's really beautiful across there. That's really pretty across there. I like that. A little walkway going out into the water. I also like the pattern of the grass out in the water. This might be a popular place today. It's going to be pretty hot down here in Portland and it's always a little cooler out on the water, out along the gorge. It's a day use area so you do have to pay, it's like five dollars for the day. That's Vista House up there on that bluff. I think the bluff is called Crown Point. Beautiful place to take in a sunrise or a sunset. I believe that's Beacon Rock way off in the distance, standing separate from the Washington uh, side of the river. Beautiful view here. This would be really pretty at sunset, I think. All right, I think this is the view. The light should be pretty stable here for a while. It's about 9.30, I've been walking for about an hour just checking stuff out in the morning light. There's a, just a ton of stuff to paint here, but I think this is what I want to try to capture. I'm gonna zoom in on those distant hills just a little bit, crop it in. What's in front of me doesn't quite fit what I want to paint, so I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to crop in on the distant hills, something like that, so that I get both sides of the river with the hills receding into the distance. I can really play with that atmospheric perspective. That'll be fun. But for the foreground, I'm actually going to paint it more like this. Um, but I, I'm going to make those little walkways extending out into the river. I'm going to make them a little shorter. I'm going to make this front walkway especially a little bit shorter. I want it to end within the painting um, and I'm going to decrease the amount of foreground here in shadow. I may just get the, the bank of the river leading off the bottom of the panel. So I'm going to play with it as I do the initial sketch and as I do the turpentine wash. I'll start with a small brush and a little bit of burnt sienna. It's a very warm scene with all the greens. Lots of blue in it but kind of the color behind the blue and the green 
is a nice warm burnt sienna, a little bit of cad yellow. So with a small brush with a little bit of burnt sienna I'm going to sketch the composition the way I want it and then I'll go into the turpentine wash. Use this large Utrecht number 12, it's about an inch wide. It's kind of a beat up, soft old natural bristle brush. I'm going to start with a little bit of cerulean blue to wash in the sky. Maybe just a touch of yellow. Oh. Totally fine if the burnt sienna from the sketch gets into the blue. I can go back over it later and Correct that. Add just a touch of cobalt toward the top of the sky. Now I'll go with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. for the distant mountains. The turpentine wash, if you watch my videos, I've been starting this way for a couple years now. It's really fun. I learned it from Richard Schmid and Mark Boedges, both phenomenal painters. It's a way to start an oil painting with almost a watercolor type wash and it really gives you some dynamic effects. I used to paint a lot with watercolor. I still do so doing the initial wash is kind of fun for me. It, it makes the painting almost feel like a watercolor especially in the early stages. And if you're lucky you can leave some of that initial wash in place without covering it up. After that I'll go into mixing the colors. I'm going to keep the those far background hills in the sky, very high value, very grayed out, very little value difference in the layers. And then as I come forward, I'll get richer and darker with more contrast. Finally, the walkway there closest to us will have the most contrast. So it should really jump forward. As always, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. some cad yellow with burnt sienna for the grass and the mountain, that nearest mountain. Now I'll just re-wet my brush with a little bit of turpentine and scrub away the lightest lights, which is the sky right next to the mountains, right at the horizon very light. You can even take a paper towel or your rag wipe some of that away. And this passage right here is very light.
All right, there's the rough turpentine wash and value map in. It's all pretty high key, I wanna keep it that way. Maybe some deeper shadows right up front. So now I'll start mixing up the colors. Give a quick rundown on my palette. I put the turpentine away and I've got the Gamsol out. I've got a little bit of liquid in here. This is underpainting white, which is just titanium white with some fast drying alkyde added. Ivory black, cold gray, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, transparent oxide brown, burnt sienna, a lizard and crimson, cad red, cad yellow, Windsor lemon, and yellow ochre. Now I'll mix up a little bit of the sky color. It's really, really light value. A little bit of cerulean blue toward the top of the sky. A little bit of cad yellow toward the bottom. And I'm going to add just a little bit of gray to both to keep the chroma far down. some color mixed up. Now I've got the sky colors here. I've got the farthest back mountains here, very grayed out shades of gray and lavender, some slightly more warm, some slightly more cool. And then this is for the furthest, the closest mountain. These are for the closest mountain on the left hand side. And I'll also touch into these a little bit for the closest mountain on the right hand side but I'll keep that more blue because it's more in shadow. You can see here I'm using a large brush. It's a rosemary evergreen. I first dip it into a little Gamsol just so that the paint doesn't stick to a dry brush. This helps it flow. I wipe it off on the t-shirt rag that I keep next to me on the camera tripod. I wipe it off because I don't want the paint to become too soupy. little titanium white to lighten the value right where the sky meets the hills. I use the same color and the same brush to mop in the lightest portions of the river. I wipe off and use that same brush and paint the farthest back hills. I key the hills to the sky and look out at the scene often to check how the values relate. If you soften your eyes, soften the focus of your eyes as you look into the distance, there's very little value difference between the sky and the furthest back hills.
Now I'll use a smaller rosemary evergreen filbert on this nearest hill. It has more discernible detail even when you squint. The values look dark here as I'm painting, but in reality they are probably only about 5 out of a 10 degree value scale or about 50% as dark as I could get if I mixed alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber, the darkest color I can mix with these paints. Now I go back to that brush that I used on the sky and the furthest back hills to mop in the next darkest areas of the water and the river. I dip into those sky colors and the farthest back hill colors. Those reflected colors in the water are almost a mirror image of those farthest back hills. The water is continually changing, so I try to both paint what I see, but also stop when I achieve something that looks right or looks interesting. I dip into a little titanium white to lighten and dull, and a little gamsol to help the flow. Since it's warm and breezy, the paint is firming up and getting a little tacky. I use the palette knife as well to add a little cleaner color, not blended or contaminated by the brush. The palette knife adds some interesting texture as well. Now I want to mix up just a little richer yellow for this foreground bank of brush, that little sandbar. 
and then finally I'll draw in the dark shadow of the walkway and then I think I'll be about done here. All right, now I just want to draw in the walkways that are extending out into the water. I think I'll do an initial mark with the squeegee. That'll give me a nice long flat line. And then I may back that up with the palette knife if I need to.
what a beautiful day here on the Columbia River in the gorge. Just a beautiful little spot. Stayed nice and cool. I actually had to put my hoodie back on because it was chilly in the wind off the water. Some little squirrels kept me company. I'm sure they get fed. I, I don't feed the animals. Let me show you where the painting ended up. Here's the finished painting. The light stayed pretty consistent. I lost most of the shadows, but that didn't seem to change the, the light on the mountains too much. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think it matches the colors of the scene pretty well, and I like the composition changes I made. I'll take it back to the studio and take another look at it. to play with that atmospheric perspective in this scene. Lots of layers and you can push them way back. I also like how these bushes in the foreground are nice and warm. I have a lot to learn with a squeegee. I'm still pretty clumsy with it, but that worked pretty well. Um, drawing a nice straight line for those walkways. Well, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, subscribe to my newsletter. I'll be putting information about the upcoming show in there. And also take a look at these plein air paintings. I sell them at a pretty reasonable price because I use them as, as practice and, and sometimes they turn out pretty well definitely recommend the Columbia River Gorge. It's a beautiful area. I'm going to have a little lunch and maybe do another couple paintings here today. I'll see you in the next one.